Boom. Thanks, Sean. Hey, everyone. It's Tuesday, November 12th. You're here at the weekly chaos community call. Um, oh, you're sharing too. Cool. Okay. Oh, awesome. are you sharing? I, okay. Sorry. Oh, Let me stop sharing. You are sharing. No, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> if you want to share, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I didn't see I, sharing. So that's why I shared. Were you sharing already? No, I was not. Okay. All right. You are good. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you've not told us what your favorite article of clothing is, um, please do so. I don't even know what mine is. I, I asked the question not knowing the answer. I'd have to think about it. I'm just curious because it's I need to do laundry really is what made it made me think of this question is <laughs> the laundry is piling up higher and higher and higher. So yeah, it's clearly on my mind. Uh, okay, so let's start on the agenda. The first thing is that we um, have the community survey still open. If you've not taken that, please, please, please do so. We have a very large community and we only have 49 responses and only 25 of those have completed. So um, I did a huge ping in the general channel to everyone. So apologies for that if that was annoying to you. But what we really are just trying to get people to fill this out. We want more voices to be heard. So um, we have more input on how we can make the community better. So please fill that out if you have not done so. It should take you about 10 minutes, maybe. Um, yeah, we'd really appreciate it. It will be very helpful to the community if you could do so. Questions on that? Okie dokie. Then we will go on. Um, next thing on the agenda is to let everybody know, in case you did not see the announcement, the ChaosCon CFP is open until December 17th. So if you have something you want to talk about with the Chaos community at ChaosCon, please submit your ideas in that form. That's linked right there. And we will be making um, the I guess the final decision on talks uh, soon thereafter. I don't know that we have a date in mind, but it will be soon because we know everybody has to make travel arrangements and things. And we keep it open until December 17th because we know that other people are also submitting to FOSTEM. And so, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to link those two things up to give people a chance because, um, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. So questions on the CFP. Are we looking for any particular, I don't know, genre of talk, or are we, are we most interested in topical talks by individuals or a couple of people, or are we uh, panels? Like, what do we do? We have any general inclination that that you've picked up on Elizabeth or Don or anyone else? It's a really good question. I don't think we have a preference okay. in my, uh, at least as far as I think <laughs> we we definitely don't really have a preference on topics um, obviously it needs to be somewhat related to open source community health or chaos in some way um, although if you did have a talk about how awesome dogs are i don't know if that would be too terrible like i would attend that talk but um but yeah Dog no, awesome to your... metrics <laughs> right um, I don't think we have a list of preferred topics or styles. And I know when you go to that CFP, there is there are a couple of options, but I think we're also open to something else beyond that. So we really just want to see what y'all have have on your minds and um, the ideas that you have. Thanks. We are also, I should mention, looking for sponsors for ChaosCon. That would be super, super helpful because we do like to try to provide, um, you know, coffee and tea and light snacks throughout the day. And having a sponsorship really, really helps with that. So if you're at a company that does that kind of thing, we would be most grateful. There's a link in the website um, to the sponsorship prospectus. And there are a few options that are pretty affordable, maybe. So, so we would really appreciate it. Anything that uh, if your company wants to sponsor, that would be fantastic. We would greatly appreciate that. And of course, registration is also open if you just want to come hang out and registration is $10. So you can see all about that on the ChaosCon website. Yeah. And for those new to the community, that $10 charge only exists to ferret out people who sign up for things that are free and then don't come. 
it's just really a, a minimal charge so that there's a little bit more commitment than I'll just sign up for the free thing. And then we really don't have any idea how many people are coming. So we're not getting rich on 10 bucks is the point. <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> we, we run, uh, we run pretty close on our uh, venue size versus how many people are expecting. Right. So yeah, we, uh, we, in our venue, if we have uh, space for 50 people, uh, we can kind of expect to see 50 people. So if, if yep. 25 sign up and don't show up, then uh, we're in trouble. Makes plenty. <laughs> very, yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. Any final questions about chaos con that anybody has? Okie dokie. The next thing on our agenda is that I wanted to let everyone know the metrics have all been updated to our new template. So huge Ooh. shout out to Julia and Yiga for all of their hard work on this amazing work on that. Um, we do have two known issues that we're working on right now. Um, but if you do have any time, you're bored and you want something to do, uh, it'd be great if you could just do some spot checking on our metrics, make sure that they all look okay. We did um, implement in the new updated template for those who don't know, we have a drop down that we're doing in Markdown and I mean, it, it should work. <laughs> if, if we've done everything right, it will work, but uh, there's of course always a chance that something got broken along the way. So just wanna make sure that um, things look right and things look good. So if you do have any time, wanna do some spot checking, that'd be great. And if you do find anything that looks wonky, uh, you can just, whoops. Whoa. Yeah, that sounds like something I would stuff. do. <laughs> Throwing stuff left and right. What is, um, what is the issue with contributors? I'm just curious. Uh, there's the file somewhere in the process of the PRs um, got is missing. So we just need to track that down and re-upload it back into the repo. So not a big deal. I'm sure it's in a, I'm sure it's somewhere. We just need to figure out what happened there. So no biggie. So it's the contributors markdown. The actual file is like just disappeared. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that, how. That's in the we'll chaos have... metrics repository. It's in the maybe. It seems like okay. it would be. Yes. So it would have it would have come from the uh the old uh that that one would have come from the old uh evolution or uh, uh working group. Okay. Well, I thought maybe it was fucking common. Was, was that a, which one is it contributors or or contributors. Contributors. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that one came from common. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just um, just pinged um, Peculiar and Yiga earlier today. Um, I just want to make sure if one of them is already working on it. I didn't um, just first step. I did. Uh, I offered to track that down about a week ago, and I was told someone else was doing it. So yeah, uh, if, um, if 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 you I want me to look at it, I will. But uh. I'm I have gonna, a copy. I'm not going to do it if someone else is working on. I have a copy yeah. of where should I paste the markdown? Um, Metrics, maybe, probably. Yeah, yeah, if you want to, sure. All right. Cool. Thanks. No problem. And the issue with the chat platform inclusivity is that metric needs a whole lot of work. So we are going to um, bring that back to the DEI working group to to kind of rework that. It's not a it's not a great metric. So we're going to try to make that better in the process of all of our updating. Any other questions, comments, discussion about the updated metrics? Okay, um, one more thing on our agenda to talk about is the, so in the, I did a new Badger orientation earlier today, and um, one of the questions that was brought up was if the badging website and the application would be available in other languages, and it is not, because it's not part of our chaos website, it's on its own separate thing. Um, so I just thought I, I, I thought it was a great question, first of all, uh, for trying to be as inclusive as possible, offering that in a in separate um, in a separate language would be great. 
It would also mean we would need badgers that speak that language that could understand the applications that come in. Um, but that is something that we could ask badgers if they do speak more than one language, uh, what they would be willing to do. Um, I wasn't sure. So yeah, actually, there are, yes, there are two things here with this whole um, conversation. The first one is the badging website and all of like that repercussions. And I'm guessing that would be a, a conversation I need to have with Eddie Inca and Enoch, uh, maybe Kingsley, to see how, if we want to do that, how that would even work, <laughs> how we could make that happen. Um, yes, Sean, is that your hand? It is. I can't find the raise hand button in this version of Zoom, so I, <laughs> I don't know where it went. This is um, effective. I just, I, uh, the first, I'm going to look at, because we're using, it's called like G Translate or something on the WordPress site, right? Mm -hmm. The reason we can't use the plugin on the badging site is because it's a custom site. It's not a WordPress site, which is totally the right thing. Um, I'm just going to look to see if that specific plugin has a, a more generic version of it or if there's it seems to me there should be something open source that does something very much like that like it's g translate on wordpress is not doing anything super special you know uh, like, g, g translate is built on top of google translate i believe uh, that's uh, which right. which i believe is open and possibly free stop it yeah i thought it was built on goggins translate but it could be google that's the other common g <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I'll take a look at that, Elizabeth, to see it because <laughs> maintaining it manually would be a lot of work, right? And we couldn't yeah. probably have the same diversity of languages that we can offer on the public site. So I'll just I'll just take a look. Okay, thank you. So then that kind of leads into the other half of this, which is um, if. If we wanted to open, like officially open translations as an, like kind of a more official or more formal way to contribute, um, is that a thing that we want? I don't, I don't know how the community feels. I personally think that it would be awesome to revive that translations repo and have that be a thing that people can do, going through the website, and seeing what what needs to be fixed or things that don't read quite well, quite right. Um, right now, we don't really have an official way for people to to do that or to report any kind of things that they see. Harmony is saying thumbs up. What do you all think? Yeah, Sean, go ahead. I think it, if if we have people willing to do it, certainly the native speaker translations are better than some piece of software in almost every case. Keep walking. Sorry, you were a little fuzzy there, Georg. What'd you say? I didn't understand what Georg said, but, but yeah, that might, might be yeah, there people if there are folks that can help with particular languages, I do think that would be awesome. Yeah, I couldn't really think of a reason why not. Um, you know, if somebody sees something, they can fix it. Uh, would be great. Yeah, I think a, a combination of software with the ability to uh, have some uh, natural speakers go in and edit it would be would be ideal. I don't I don't think we should go back to the way we were doing it prior, where we had uh, an entire working group uh, for for each language. Uh, that was that was really uh, uh, that was a lot of work. I would tend to agree with that. And I think really the only reason to revive that repo is just to have a place for people to file issues or um, things that they want to change or could be changed. And then from there, we could figure out a workflow, I think. Um, you could just run that process through the website repo. True. True. Maybe we just keep it there. Yeah, Harmony. So, so my, my question is, if we're going to do this, what languages are you looking at first? So folks that are interested or folks that have like the experience with these things will be able to notify. Oh, what languages are we looking at? I, whatever. Um, I don't think there's any grand plan. It's 
um, what whatever people can speak and want to look at, whoever has the time and energy and, and wants to do it. As far as as far as G Translate goes on the uh, the website, we can add we can add uh, as many languages as we want. I believe uh, we've tried to add a, a nice collection of them. Uh, but if there's a request to add another language, uh, we can certainly do that. Uh, and if we uh, if we use some sort of Google Translate uh, code for the uh, the badging website, I I would think that process would be very similar. So yeah, we we've used the, the languages that have the boxes checked right now are ones where we have had activity in the community from folks who are native speakers of those languages. So th that's the that's the only boundary. Like if you check every language on Earth, it gets a little unwieldy, right? So we we've just checked the ones where we know we have folks who speak those languages at this point. And we definitely have added languages on request multiple yep. times. So okay, so I'm hearing that maybe we just keep it in the website, leave leave the translations repo archived as it is now. Um, and then just point people towards the website repo to open an issue if they see something that could be better. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, unless there's folks who are, uh, you know, that have a direct an interest in this right now, I mean, I, I do, so, I mean, I guess that's the default, but if folks are interested, I do think it would be welcome. And the, the G Translate tool for the website gives us, as I know from the questions that you asked last week, Elizabeth, it does give us the ability to uh, adjust the translations from their default and persist that forever. So um, if there is, if there are folks interested, I, I do think we'd welcome it, but if not, then we'll just continue to do what we're doing, I think. Maybe we could wow. do a, a template for any translation recommendations. Uh, sorry, what an issue? I just said maybe we could do an issue template for folks Ooh, who find idea. something could be better. And and we have we have by the way we have edited the uh, G Translate. Uh, I think we've done that for Chinese and for Spanish. Uh, when we when we came across words or things that were uh, uh, not coming across all that well. So um, yeah, I think that the two the two languages that we've edited were Chinese and Spanish. Next. I like that idea of an issue template because it makes the translation problem a lightweight problem. I'm just thinking, okay. Is there, should we give, anybody want to take an action item to create an issue template? <laughs> Can't be Elizabeth. Elizabeth does everything. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't mind doing it. It won't All take right. long. I'll, I'll take it. Which repo should it go into? In the website repo. Okay. AI no longer immediately means action item to me, which is frustrating, but I'll get over it. I know the same. Intel is something AI is action required. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm gonna go with that. I just assumed you were gonna ask ChatGPT to do it for you. <laughs> you know, it probably would, is the scary part. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions, comments, discussion on this? Okay. Um, I think that's the end of our actual agenda of new things. Um, important reminder about the upcoming schedule. I think I've made, I think I've made all of the changes to the calendar. Um, Sean, with the exception of the uh, science and research open source meeting that is moving, I have not done that. The, the one that um, I told you about 15 minutes before the meeting, <laughs> that one, you haven't done that yet? <laughs> I have not, but I will. 
for sure. Um, and for folks who have been who haven't been here at community meetings um, or are new to the community. We do this every year. We take a very long break at the end of the year because we are very concerned about burnout and we want to give people a break. So we um, and then the week of November 25th is Thanksgiving here at the in the States. We have canceled all of the US based meetings, uh, chaos Africa and chaos Asia your meetings, you can do whatever you want. Just let me know if you want to cancel just let me know and i'll take it off the calendar if you want But as far as right now it's still on so let me know if you want to cancel otherwise it's just they're going to go ahead as planned. And then we take all of the meetings all of the meetings at no matter where you are in the world will be canceled from December 9th to January 6th just to give people a few just just give people a minute. You know, just need a minute at the end of the at the end of the year. So um, yeah, so that should be reflected on the calendar. Uh, if it has not updated in your calendar, if you're subscribed, just give it a minute because sometimes that takes a while to get through the cache um, and refresh. Uh, it is on the also on the website calendar. It is already reflected. So if you just check that, then you'll see those changes already. A uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. For the chaos con meetings that uh, would usually happen after this meeting, uh, do we want to schedule a chaos con meeting during that break period? Uh, because we'll the have CFP to have one. does close during that. Yeah. We'll have to have one to tell people. So, yes, I, I mean, that's my opinion. I don't know what Elizabeth and Don and others think. I'm not opposed to it. Um, we can also work async. I'm not opposed to that either. Whatever you all want to do. Maybe we can so add it to the, the agenda. This is a CFP selection. I know the subset of people I'm not actually working on of talk, but you'll probably need to have a meeting for that. For like final discussions with the agenda. I, I think that's so that's what the uh, that's the consequence of closing the CFP so late. Um, I know we ran into for self for five down, but it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Don, you break up a little bit, but I think I think your point is generally that we will have to meet, but perhaps we could do some of it asynchronously. Yeah. No. Sorry, it's really noisy. The selection, the selection of talk, I have never seen that work asynchronously. It's always, it's always got to be. I tend to agree with that. It's never worked asynchronously is now how I hear Don's point, and I agree. Can we just add that to the agenda, maybe to schedule that meeting in the future before we take our break? <laughs> I, I think I think that, yeah, I think we could schedule it using the, the committee, the ChaosCon committee channel in Slack. But with all my other chaos meetings canceled, I will have more time <laughs> after the 17th, less scheduled time. The semester is over. The chaos meetings aren't happening. Should be pretty easy to schedule a lot of us. Okay. Um, the next thing is, assuming there's no other conversation about that, I don't want to jump ahead if we're still talking about it. But the next thing on the agenda, just as a reminder, that the FOSDEM CFPs for the dev rooms are open. So if you are interested in submitting to FOSDEM, also piggybacking with ChaosCon in Belgium, um, that's where you can go do that. So it'd be great to see a lot of chaos representation at FOSDEM, I think. It'd be awesome. And there's a ton of, ton, ton of different dev rooms. For those who haven't been to FOSDEM before, that's how it's run. It's not like a regular conference where everybody's in the same place and there's three tracks or two tracks. It's a, th a thousand tracks in a thousand different rooms on this university. <laughs> so you can really pick and choose what you want to go see. Um, it's a very cool way that they do it, but every room is kind of their own little mini conference. So their own, they're responsible for doing their own CFPs, their own um, choosing of talks. All of that is is done with the leaders of that dev room. So it's very, very cool. Is the is just for my clarity because 
this is a layered process at FOSDEM, is the December 1st deadline the deadline to submit for a talk in an already chosen dev room, or is it the deadline for proposing a dev room? Because I, I believe the different things. Yeah, I think the dev rooms are already set. Okay. So that community one is already set, and then that's the deadline for that room to submit Got a it. talk. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. And look at that. We're half past and we, yeah, we are, are through our agenda. <laughs> who, who has something else to bring up that maybe they didn't have time for in previous weeks or something new? Well, okay. I guess, I guess yeah. that's it. I guess y'all can have your 20 minutes back. That's pretty good. Good for us. Look at us. Aren't we productive today? In fact, just take the whole rest of the day off. You, you've done enough, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I need another day off. <laughs> yeah. Just tell them chaos said it was okay. And like, who are they going to? They're not going to argue with chaos. It's all right. <laughs> of course not. I'll write a letter. I have chaos letterhead. I can write you a letter. Please excuse John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, much appreciated. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, have a great rest of your week. We'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. Have a good one. Right. See y'all later. Thank you. Bye, Thank everybody. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.